We'll see that the Markdown system is really a very powerful and useful one and incredibly helpful when we move to the projects because it allows us to undertake reproducible analysis. But it does have some additional steps that we need to be thinking about um, and I wanted to kind of step through a sample homework assignment to give you a, a feeling for how this works. We can start by downloading a file which has been made available by one of the instructors. We use the download.file command to do this. I typed down and then tab to get the command completion. Um, it takes two arguments. Um, the first argument is the URL. This is a character string saying where to find uh, what we want to download. This is available on the Amherst website. And the next thing we need is the destination file. The destination file is where we want to be putting this. I'm going to be putting into something called myhomework0.rmd. Go ahead and run that and success. When we go to the file menu, we can see that there's this file, myhomework0.rmd. If I click on that, um, it actually gives me this file. I can go ahead and make this um, larger so we can see more. And you can see there's certain places in here where we need to uh, populate this. We can say that this might be due, say, on September 7th, and my name is Nicholas Horton. Um, we kind of scroll down at this point. We can see what's in there as a way of kind of getting started. Just say for the sake of argument, we wanted to make this as a Word document. Um, as you know, Markdown will support HTML, PDF, and Word. So if I click on Knit Word, it will go ahead and run through the commands in there. We can now download this file. And if I click on that, I will open up in Microsoft Word. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We can close this up. And we can see this now has a formatted version of this where it has my name included. So this is an introduction to Markdown, and the assignment has this births data set that it that describes. It lists the first observations for the subjects. And it's asking, what are the variables in births? Labor, label each as categorical or quantitative. Well, we can see that the date is actually a date variable. So let's go back into, um, into Markdown and find that first chunk where it's asking us that question. Here's the births data set. Um, and it's one of the variables. Well, we can say the first variable is the date. It is a categorical variable. The second variable is the number of births. We could get uh, picky about this. It's a discrete random variable. It's a count. Um, let's just say it's quantitative. It's a number. Now, there's more work to be done uh, later on. There's some additional code chunks and some additional assignments, but let's go ahead and re-knit this to see what things look like once we've made these changes. Again, I'm going to download this file, open it up again, change to a little bit larger format, and now we can see we now have my solution has been put into place. Working through with Markdown is relatively straightforward. Um, we can be going back and forth in different ways, looking at these different chunks. Um, once we've um, loaded certain things like the data set and the like, we can go ahead and, and run individual observations. Um, the way I would do that here is by going ahead and say running all, because I want to make sure I have the package appropriately loaded. Um, and now at this point, we can go into, for example, run a single line. So here by saying head, um, it'll actually give me that. Um, I can, um, when I'm on a line, I can say control return and run that line in the same kind of way. I can say run the current chunk as a way of doing the similar types of things. But I can be moving back and forth and seeing if there's an error or problems. And then here is an example of running a histogram of those number of births. So overall, this is going to be a straightforward way for us to be doing work and homework um, using these files. Uh, and some practice will really help you become facile with it.